Now it's time to go back down to Mark, and I'm really looking forward to your interview this morning, Mark. Uh, Linda, you are really, really going to enjoy this segment. Now, if you're one of those folks that has always thought that in order to be uh, really proficient at self-defense, you have to be an expert in martial arts, we have a whole new way of you looking at this thing this morning. So uh, our expert is James Williams. He's actually local here in San Diego. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. An expert in uh, personal defense. James, great to see you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for and I'll having thank, me. Appreciate I'll thank it. Your, your victim. <laughs> this is Michael. <laughs> Michael, ahead of time for being here as well. Folks usually think that, oh, I've got to take years and years of karate or, or something along those lines in order to really be able to defend myself. And you say that's just, that's not a realistic approach. Completely different paradigm. Personal defense is not about fighting with people. Um, fighting with people is a, is, a, is a whole different ball game. Personal defense is about awareness. It's about taking responsibility um, for being knowing what's going on where you are and about tools primarily. You know, humans are tool users. Right. So well, we're going to talk about some of those tools in a second, but I, just lay out your background for folks, though, just, just very briefly. I mean, you train some pretty deadly folks uh, in how to get by in this world. Yes. I mean, my prime directive uh, when I'm gone is training military uh, special operations, also police SWAT teams. So um, everything from combatives, empty hand, rest and control, to edge weapons, to firearms-based assaults. And okay, enemies. so you really you do it at that very, very far end of the spectrum, the, the guys at the, the pointy end of the stick. Yes. Now we'll bring it back to, to the average everyday citizen, though. You say it's, it's very much about training, awareness, but it's about tools. And one of the things is I was looking at some of your videos, I was, again, reminded and stunned by how painful a magazine can be or a book or a ballpoint pen. Absolutely. You really stress using those things. Gra yeah. Grab a, the book there and kind of just talk to us about using the things that are around you if you get into a scary situation. Tools are everywhere. So what you have is a paperback book that looks like virtually nothing at all, but is perfectly capable of stopping a large knife cut. It's also, if you take and put the book under pressure and use the point of it, it feels like you're hitting somebody with the edge of a pointed table, like a piece of wood. So try this at home, folks. Grab a paperback book, just grab it like that, and, and pull the pages tight, and just hit yourself with the corner of that thing while you're watching this segment. Magazines are also everywhere, including on airplanes, and magazines will do the same thing. Magazines are very difficult to cut through by even a fairly large edge weapon, and when they're used see that that hurts it feels like a solid it feels like a brick you basically you? made what would be amount to a metal pipe with your hand with the magazine is, and is innocuous that that was seen and other things that work really well ballpoint pens are outstanding and they can really do some damage to somebody this is uh, one that was made specifically for this by Meltac but virtually any solid bodied aluminum metal ballpoint pen and you can feel Okay, you can yeah. feel how much pressure and put in the proper place. Boy, boy right here on the neck, on the yeah, yeah. see exactly on the, on the brachial area right here, doing a little brachial stun with something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely, somebody will go down like a sack of dirt. Yeah. Like, yeah. like as you went down right there, you weren't, you were kind of demonstrating to him that okay, that's enough. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the pressure that you feel from that enough to make a big guy like you go to your knees? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, no question about so it. We call so. these things force multipliers, and the pen could be held many different ways. Um, you can have them everywhere. I carry them on airplanes because most people do not have the ability to carry edge weapons or firearms in airplanes, which is a good thing. Right. Now, when you teach classes, and you teach here locally, you, you have yes. uh, uh, facilities here yes. in San Diego. Where are you located? I'm in uh, North San Diego County in the Lucadia area of Encinitas, um, Dojo of the Four Winds. Now you, but you, and you teach all kinds of martial arts as well. But, yes, but the, specifically the self-defense. I'm primarily uh, worldwide. I noted for uh, samurai arts, sword-based samurai arts, and the MTN that goes with them. But I also teach other types of classes, um, and I have a specific class which we call personal defense or executive personal defense. How long does something like that take? It's the a two-day class. Two-day class, so you can learn. You can be fairly proficient. Enormous amount. It all starts really. And this seems odd to people with small tactical flashlights. Yeah, this I was fascinated when I saw this on your website. And I'm going to tell everybody the website now because it's systemofstrategy.com. Yes. And it's just all, spell it all out as one word. You see it there at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a lot of videos there that will explain a lot of this. 
Just a bright light like this. Uh, this is a particular brand, isn't it? This not? is a Surefire L1. It's my personal favorite carry light. And what you end up with is about 65 lumens. Can I shine it at the camera here for the uh, moment? I don't think it'll hurt anything if it just shines okay. at it for just a moment. So yeah. what happens with that, even in a relatively lit the situation, scream. <laughs> right, is if I, if I, boom, anything I do next, whether it's a ballpoint pen or getting away, it's enormous because the person literally can't see, and the darker it is, the more effective. So you teach a lot of low light to straight, which is, right. obviously, that's where we're going to get into right. trouble sometimes, walking down the street, it's not well lit. Yes. So this light is just an invaluable it's huge tool. huge because the first thing is we don't want to engage. We want to protect ourselves. So in, when I'm teaching military police, our, our credo is all dark holes contain threats. So if you see a dark hole and that's anything you can't look into and see what's there, you shine the light. Oh, it's safe or not safe. You can shine it from a long ways away. Should I walk that way or not? Right. If somebody tries to approach, it's very difficult to approach. I'm coming at you. Yeah, it's very difficult. And if you're night adapted, you're a hundred times more susceptible to light as your eye opens. <laughs> now I can hear your voice, and I know you're over there somewhere. <laughs> That's great. You so, know, James, we're, we're flat out of time. But uh, again, I want folks to go to the website, systemofstrategy.com. Okay, and uh, have them check out the videos, have them check out some of the tools and so forth. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Thank you, Mark.